Okay, well, hey, welcome back, everybody. I'm George from Barley and Hops. I'm out here again at Walker Honey Farm with Chase, our master brewer, our mead maker, our winer. Oh, I, I mean, now, now Chase has a a, a list of um, credentials that make him very, very valuable to us, and we're trying to pick his brain with everything he's got. So I'm having fun too. <laughs> yeah, well, that's great. Now, here's the question I have, and I want to share this with everybody else: is that the challenge of fermenting anything based with citrus, because I try to avoid that because of this challenge. So would you, could you explain that? Citrus is funky, yeah. um, especially orange. I don't know if you, if you filtered, or I'm sorry, if you fermented orange juice before, there's a weird funk, and yeast seems to be kind of discontent in yeah. anything citrus. Uh, uh, the story I have to share, um, Citrus Tango, the batch that maybe you can hear the filter running We're, still. Yeah, running We're currently filter. filtering it. Um, uh, the first time I made this batch, um, I started a traditional orange blossom mead and got that fermentation rolling to then add my citrus, orange, and grapefruit juice and zest mid-fermentation. Because my thinking was, well, I want to use my honey to get my alcohol. I right. don't want to actually ferment away all my fruit sugars. I want some good like orange and grapefruit sweetness coming through. So we're going right. to add it late. Okay. So it will be fermented for a little less time than the honey. So, come, you know, I, I get to my 8% alcohol where I'm, you know, a little over halfway. I throw in the juice and the zest and the yeast just dies on oh, me. Oh, no. It goes, yeah. Everything goes completely silent. It yeah. stops. Uh, and a brewer's nightmare. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeast addition, stirring, wasn't doing anything. So, I actually found myself racking the entire batch into a big plastic tote, wheeling it out into the sun stirring it every couple hours, leaving it there every day, and then bringing it back into the cellar just to warm. Uh, and so I had, that, that was a big pain to get past that stuck fermentation. I had much better luck with this batch, uh, whereas you know, my first batch, I was worried about the fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, I abandoned my concern for the fruit and focused solely on the yeast and making the yeast happy. And yeast don't like changes. You know, when I poured that juice and zest in, that pH went way down, and, oh. and the yeast couldn't handle that fast and drastic of a change. So I put the, all the fruit in pre-fermentation um, so the yeast knew what it was up against, as, as it were. Um, so it developed its colony uh, yes. with that environment, so with it was quite happy with all that. Already there, so yeah. there, there were no changes coming at it down the line. Uh, funny story. It's almost like I overcompensated. What happened with this batch, it went completely dry. The fermentation was so healthy that I couldn't stop it. Oh, uh, okay. So what we actually have here was a finished dry citrus mead uh, that then got back sweetened with orange blossom and then fined with bentonite, sparkaloid, and then filtered as we're doing today. That is amazing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of tips on the science of why citric, citric acid and, and, you know, other compounds in that fruit make it difficult for yeast, uh, but I can just advise that your priority be the health of the yeast rather than worrying about <laughs> your fruit sugars going somewhere. You go. you yeah. It's sort of like the, uh, we're looking at, you know, the trade-off of, you know, what, what the focus on. Hey, Christina. Hi. That's all right. Go ahead. Go right ahead. <laughs> You're fine, You're yeah. 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 So it is possible to, uh, to ferment citrus um, and again, like I said, I've always avoided it uh, because of the times that I've tried it. I had it was such a challenge. So you've really you've given us a clear path that, that sure. most of us can. And I, I think you'll agree with me that we we've, mm -hmm. we've all shared those challenges. Yeah, and I would say don't be scared when you, when you're fermenting a citrus badge. It's going to smell weird, and you're going to think something's going horribly wrong. Uh, Yeast fermenting citrus makes some weird esters, but they are going to off gas and be gone by the time you've got your finished product into a glass. That's amazing. Chase, again, as always, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, and we'll hit them this time. Until next time, happy brewing. <laughs>